Welcome to the Connor's Corner segment of Ask the Lawyer. You know, a little over a year ago, my wife, Beth, she saw an uh, infomercial on TV and she said, you know, those pillows look pretty good. And she bought a few. And, you know, I have to admit, I'm sleeping better since those pillows were purchased. And we're very happy to have the man responsible for that, Mike Lindell. How are you doing today, sir? Great, great. Yeah, I'm glad the pillows are working for you. <laughs> right, right. Most of the people out there think, you know, your life has been a bed of roses. You're a rich guy. You have a lot of employees. It all came easy to you, didn't it? No, not at all. And uh, they, um, I've been very public with my story how it hasn't been easy. <laughs> but, they, uh, um, but yeah, no, it's been uh, a lot of adversity, a lot of it self-inflicted, and uh, it's been quite a journey. All right. Now, one time, I, you know, I read, and maybe the, you can tell me if it's true or not, you were at the edge of bankruptcy with your, with your company. Well, if we, you know, I can take you back at the beginning when I invented the pillow. I, um, I spent a year and a half. I, now, I was a cocaine addict, and then it turned to a crack cocaine addict in the early 2000s. And I invented the pillow in 2005, spent a year and a half of my life working on it. And uh, I mortgaged my house, had four little kids at the time. And uh, we, uh, we, we were completely out of money, but I did have the pillow invented. And I was, I was turned down everywhere. And uh, I knocked on uh, box stores and I said, how many would you like? I have the best uh, pillow ever. And they looked at me, they go, um, you need to leave, sir. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but I, uh, I ended up doing a kiosk. There was a lot of divine appointments where I, I um, ended up doing shows and fairs, um, you know, and uh, and uh, being able to sell uh, my pillow and um, and at least to survive. But we were down to nothing. We mortgaged our house that year to buy, to even to buy Christmas presents and for the kids. And uh, it got up to, uh, um, I ended up a lot of, like I say, a lot of adversity. I had the company try to be taken. It was just my family working and we had uh, all this, all this stuff we faced. I ended up getting a divorce of 20 years uh, when we were losing everything. And, um, on January 16, 2009, I had one prayer and that was, uh, the company was completely, I'm like, we we're down to like a little, like a little dot on the old fashioned TVs where you, you, you know, you, you turn them off and they, and it gets down to this little tiny dot. And then it, you try to turn it back on before the dot goes out. Well, um, on January 16, 2009, I, I had one prayer. I said, God, I, I want to wake up in the morning and never have the desire for drugs or alcohol, anything again. And then I surrender and they, uh, um, and I did, I woke up that next morning and it was gone. I said, Jesus, I said, uh, you know, it was the most peaceful feeling I had ever, ever had. And, uh, um, that was the start of, uh, of, uh, it wasn't all easy from then on either, either, but, uh, um, it got up to, um, um, I, my company was all taken then by different people that had took, taken my shows and there was really nothing left then. And we, but I, I started to get things back one thing at a time and, uh, got up to, um, in December or I mean, in, uh, uh, 2011, October 7th of 2011, I had told my friends and family that summer, I said, let's, let's put together an infomercial and make a half hour infomercial. I want to make it real. I want to make it, um, um, you know, just to, and I said, it's going to be the biggest infomercial ever. And I, and I kind of took what I had done at the shows all those time. It kept, what kept me going was people at the shows come up and go, wow, you're, this pill is amazing. And it's helped me so much. And I, I just feel so blessed to help people. And, and, uh, this thing launched October 7, 2011. And, and we went from five employees to 540 days. Now, let me ask you something. When you had your problems with cocaine, crack cocaine, were you a believer in, in, in God at that time? You know, I knew I did. I did believe I wasn't born again, but I did believe in God. And I did. I know that God, I always would pray when things were down. And I always, uh, and I always knew I had a bigger platform that the pillow was just a platform for a much bigger calling. And uh, where I'm at now, I mean, my pillow is just a platform for my, my evangelism and everything else I'm doing now that, um, um, and, but yeah, to, to answer your question, I did, I did believe in God. Did I, um, did I walk with Jesus? No. All right. So you get your start, you get your break. And I think a lot of people don't really appreciate this. You went from five employees to 500 employees, which means f 
495 plus people have jobs now that they may not have had jobs if you weren't successful. Right. And that was in 40 days. And that, you know, we, that was growth. I, I look back now and that was a miracle in itself. I mean, I'm going, how did we, we didn't, we, we made enough pillows. That was Christmas in uh, 2011. And we, nobody, everybody got their pillows in time for Christmas. It was just amazing. We were hiring so many people off this, you know, one after another. Now I have over 1600 employees and it's all people that, you know, um, you know, my hometown where I grew up. I mean, it's just amazing for me to, to, to see all these, not just jobs, but careers. We, we create careers. Now I'm sure you could make your product cheaper overseas. Well, you know, that's a, everyone said, you can't make a pillow here. They, you know, there were so many naysayers in the beginning. You, you're not going to get a patent on a pillow. You, even if you do, you certainly can't make it here. It's not, you know, um, you're going to have to make it overseas. And I, you could maybe, if you, you know, make it overseas cheaper, but I would never do that. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. People, if there's entrepreneurs out there and you're thinking of making a product overseas, let me tell you, you have 120 days on the water. If you're, if you, I, I've seen it happen to companies, small entrepreneurs, they think they're going to save a little bit of money on you know, labor or something. And then they find out maybe their market changed by the time they got it here or bigger companies knocked them off. And they, uh, maybe they get it here and the product isn't as good because it was made over there. And you don't have the quality control you have here by looking at your own quality. I'd never even have ever thought of making it overseas, but I've heard uh, a lot of bad uh, stories about people that have. And, and um, so, you know, to answer your question, I, I, in the long run, I don't think you, you know, you make uh, the stuff made over there. I don't, unless you're a huge company and you have this big pipeline and be able to hold inventory that, that it's, that it's that, uh, that you save that much money anyway. Now, let me ask you something. I understand you're working on a book. What do you want the, the future reader to get out of this book? What's going to be the point of it? Well, the book's called "What Are the Odds?" and it's from crack addict to CEO, and and it's uh, the what you're going to get out of. It. I've had 14 near death experiences. I've had all these miracles within the book, like what, like what, one in a million, one in a billions, and, and proof that these things, that these different things happen, and that God was with me throughout. And I want people to look at their own life and say when do you consider it a miracle? You go, you know, you put stuff off to chance going, wow, that couldn't have even happened. What are the odds? And, you know, when do you, and so by the time you read the book, if you don't believe in God, you, you know, you need to reread the book. And I wanted to give an amazing story of hope. Uh, when people approach me now, when I'm, uh, when I'm out there now, I was in, in the public, people don't approach me. Oh, my pillow, my pillow. It's, it's, they want to hear about my story, that it gives them a story of hope, people with addictions, people with just a story of hope in general. And they want to hear about, uh, they want to hear about Jesus. They want to hear about, um, you know, how the adversity overcome. They want to, you know, these are the things they want to hear about that mean something to them. And uh, that's what the book's going to put out there is, is uh, just a story of hope where people can look at their own lives and see, hopefully see something in there. Um, and I just want to, you know, to be able to give back to help people and, and to give them a, you know, it's just like the addictions going on now when we talk about opiate addictions and the, and uh, I've told people many times, I said, if you're a family out there and you've got someone that's a, you know, a son or daughter, maybe that's addicted to opiates, and you, what you need to find, we, you know, we all hear people are dying. Now I had someone very close to me, a 22 year old uh, that uh, died just the other day of, of, uh, of you know, of, of OD'd on heroin and opiates. And they, but with the, what you need to do is everybody knows the success story too. So you go to that and you find out how they were successful and it gives that addict hope that he's, you know, where he's feeling hopeless. You go, how did you get through this? And he gets something. So he sees a peer Somebody that's, you know, that's like him or that was, you know, that, that has made it through and got, and got uh, you know, and most of the time they're going to find out it's Jesus and that, and that God's, you know, that that's how they got, you know, got help. And, and if they're not acceptable to that, then you know what, you planted a seed. And even the families that are approaching that family, you know, it gives them hope too. So hope, you know, hope makes hope and, and breeds hope. And they, uh, and that's what I want people to, you know, whether we talk about how this opiate addiction is so, got so big so fast. Well, um, with God, all things are possible, and we got to just reverse it and show people that it can be beaten, and, uh, and uh, it will be.
Okay. Now, are there any future projects you want to share with the audience that you're, you're going to be working on? Well, we've got a, I've got my foundation coming out. And what that is, is I kind of reverse engineered what foundations are all about. I got tired of, uh, you know, how much my money really goes to the cause. You know, how much are, this, are they paying their CEOs? How much is the overhead? So what I've done is with my foundation, you'll be able to pick your whatever it is. The, the individual, whatever the need is, and 100% of your money is going to go there, and you're going to be able to hear back the difference you made in their life. And all the overheads paid by myself, my pillow, or other, other donors. So you have a uh, – and it's gonna, we're going to bring back trust into what foundations are supposed to be. And, and um, you know, I think there's so many people out there that want to help, but they just don't know where to put their money anymore to help people. And – I want to bring the trust back into that, uh, into that. And, uh, so people can have the blessing of, I mean, it, it, there's nothing better than giving and be able to know that it, you really did change the world or change or help that person help others. And that's, uh, the, and that's what, uh, this foundation will do. And it's, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be launched very soon. And, and, uh, it's going to help so many people. I really believe that it was a God idea that God gave, gave me this idea and it's going to, and it's going to help so many people. Now, I understand from my producer, you may be thinking about getting into the film industry. Well, we did. The, um, I'm going to actually make a movie about from my book, but I actually was with um, a good friend of mine, Stephen Baldwin. We, uh, we put, I, I told him, I said, you know, before I make my movie, I want to learn the industry. And we went out and we made a movie. Um, we did make a movie. It's a, it's a Christian comedy, actually. It's going to be launched probably early, early uh, first quarter of next year. It's, it's, it's uh, definitely a month or two before Easter called Youth Group. Uh, we might change the name of it right now. It's called Youth Group. And it's, uh, I have a cameo in there. It was very, it was very, I learned a lot making it. And it's a, it's a very good uh, movie. And uh, um, I think um, it's got a great message um, for, um, for the world. So I think it'll be, uh, but I, I learned a lot. And I, and uh, now am I going to continue to make movies? I know my, my, my big focus is, uh, is the movie for my book because I really want that to, once again, give people hope and give people, uh, um, you know, what, what I do, what, everything I do now is to, is if it doesn't help people, I really don't want to do it. I, there's no, you know, I want it to be able to help people either physically or uh, spiritually or, or, um, you know, in some way. And otherwise to me, it's not, you know, just to make money that doesn't, that doesn't do anything for me unless they, unless I can give the money away to help people. Mike Lindell, thank you for making a good product. One, thank you for what all you're doing. You're a very good example to a lot of people out there and God bless you for the work. Hopefully your foundation goes well. Hopefully that film does well. And we hope to see you again on the show in a, in a few months. Or so when the book comes out, well, thank you. It's been an honor to be here and God bless you. God bless you.